Hello everyone and welcome back to Orbital Basics. Previously we learned what is an orbit. We saw that when we google the phrase what is an orbit we get a definition that is not quite accurate because when we draw it there is a little bit of confusion. We then learned to define what an orbit is using a slightly better and more accurate explanation which involved a term called barycenter. We learned that this is indeed the center of mass of two objects or more objects orbiting around one another. And that we saw that when a large body like the moon orbits the earth, the barycenter of the earth-moon system is further away from the center of the earth than is the barycenter of the earth ISS system. In this session here we are going to see what it takes to remain in a stable closed orbit. We are going to answer this second question here. What is a stable closed orbit to begin with? Let's suppose that this is the Earth and that this is an orbit. A stable orbit is that one which in which an object orbiting the Earth or say any other central body will stay in that orbit for a very long period of time. For a very long period of time. We're talking several years, several years, going to decades even. Many satellites indeed have been in stable closed orbits around the Earth for decades. So what does it take to remain in a stable closed orbit? Suppose that this is the surface of the Earth when viewed from far out and at this here is some mountain on which you are stationed and you have in your hand a baseball. If you hurl that baseball off the mountain, where it will land depends on how hard you hurl the baseball. The harder you throw it, the further and further it will start to land. Therefore, the distance, that is the range of the baseball, is directly dependent upon how much energy you impart to the baseball. This energy that you have imparted to the baseball is kinetic energy and it's mathematically equal to one half of the mass of the object that you are providing the energy to multiplied by its velocity squared. So if you impart some energy to the baseball what will its, what will its initial velocity as soon as it uh, goes out of your hand will be? you can isolate for this V here and you'll see that V is equal to twice kinetic energy divided by the mass of the baseball and the under root of all of that. So the harder you throw the baseball the faster its initial velocity and the faster the range or the longer the range. Going back to our Earth scenario say you are standing on the mountain here again and you throw the baseball. Now the, if, you, if you don't throw it hard enough you can probably tell that it's gonna go somewhere out there and then fall back to earth eventually. By instinct alone you can deduce this. If you throw it really hard it might go a fair bit into, uh, into space but it'll still come back. If there will come a point when you throw it harder and harder when the baseball at one point will eventually go all the way around and come back to its starting position. And it will complete the process over and over again. This is a stable and closed orbit. But what is happening here? Why does it stay there? Let's um, see why it stays there. Suppose that this here is the Earth. And this is the International Space Station, the ISS. The ISS orbits at an altitude of 340 kilometers above mean sea level. Suppose it is going in this closed orbit in a counterclockwise direction. The ISS has some physical mass because it is a physical body. In orbit there are two things happening with the ISS. First, obviously it has some velocity otherwise it wouldn't be in orbit. This is a tangential velocity of the orbit. Of, of the ISS in that orbit. Secondly, at all points in time the ISS is acted upon by the force of gravity which acts straight down toward the center of the Earth. 
because the ISS has some mass and because it has some velocity, it has what is known as momentum, P, which is equal to the mass of the body multiplied by its velocity. When the ISS comes over here, for example, in its orbit, you will notice that the velocity direction has changed. Its magnitude may, this, may be the same, but because the direction has changed, the velocity has changed with respect to time. And therefore, the momentum has changed with respect to time. And this is equal to the change over time of the right-hand side. Mass here does not change. The mass is constant. So, we can write this another way. The change of velocity over time. This change of velocity over time is an entity from position and motion, if you remember, known as acceleration. Therefore, the change of momentum over time is the mass of the ISS multiplied by the acceleration. What is this acceleration? Because it is in circular orbit, that we are assuming that, this acceleration is the centripetal acceleration. From position and motion again, if you remember, centripetal acceleration is simply the velocity of the object, the, well, the magnitude of the velocity, not the vector, divided by the radius of the circular motion. Here, the radius of the circular motion is simply that distance there. So it's the altitude plus the radius of the Earth. So the altitude is 340 kilometers, and the radius of the Earth is 6,731 kilometers. They're both kilometers. So if we go back to this, substituting everything back, we know that the difference of, or the change of momentum over time is going to be equal to mass times velocity squared divided by the radius of the circular motion. On the other hand, because the ISS has mass, it has also is also been acted upon by the force of gravity. This from Newton's laws of gravitation is equal to the mass of the ISS times the acceleration due to gravity. So what is happening here in a stable closed orbit or the ISS is able to stay in a stable closed orbit because the rate of change of momentum over time balances the force of gravity encountered by the ISS in its orbit. If the momentum were too small, that is, mass doesn't change, therefore the velocity were too small, if it had too little velocity, it would simply fall back down to Earth. If the velocity was so large that the, moment, the rate of change of momentum vastly outweighed the force of gravity, the ISS would simply fly off into space. And that's what's important. To stay in a stable closed orbit, you have to balance out the force of gravity with your own change of momentum in time. This brings us to the question, what is the velocity required by the ISS to stay in an orbit of 340 kilometers altitude? It's simple mathematics and let's figure it out. So in short, we want to know mv square over r when it equals fg, which is mg, what is v? The beautiful part of this equation is that the mass of the ISS does not actually matter. Therefore, as long as it's going at some velocity, it is, it, it is able to stay in the orbit of that particular radius. So if you isolate for v, this is equal to the under root of g times r. g here is not equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. And I'll tell you why. This value of g is only valid at mean sea level. So what is g at 340 kilometers altitude? It's easy to figure it out. From Newton's law of gravitation, you know fg is equal to m times g. And we know that this is also equal to the capital G, the gravitational, universal gravitational constant, times by the mass of the ISS, times by the bigger mass of the, or the mass of the central body, which is the Earth, divided by the radius squared. 
Again, the mass of the axis will cancel out, and g is equal to g times m over r squared. r, we know, as we saw in the previous image, is this plus that. So it's 340 plus 6371, which is equal to 6711 kilometers, or 67 one one thousand meters g is equal to six point six seven one multiplied by ten to the power negative eleven and the units are kind of interesting meter cubed per kilogram seconds m is the mass of the earth and that is equal to five point nine eight times ten to the power twenty four kilograms and if you substitute 1, 2, and 3 in this equation here, you'll find out that g is equal to 8.857 meters per second squared. And this is the gravity or the acceleration due to gravity at 340 kilometers altitude. You put this one here and this r back into this equation and we can find out what is the velocity required by the ISS to stay at that altitude in a stable closed orbit and that will be equal if you carry out that uh, carry out the mathematics of the under root of 8.857 multiplied by 6711000 and take the under root of all that you will see that v is equal to 7709 meters per second or 7.709 kilometers per second so for the ISS to stay in a stable closed orbit at 340 kilometers above mean sea level it will need to have a tangential velocity of 7.71 kilometers per second as I said previously it is moving really really fast so today we saw what it takes to remain in a stable closed orbit. Next time, we'll answer the third question. How do we define orbits? For now, this is it. Thank you.